and welcome back to Teacher Gimbal's channel. Today we'll be going over Algebra 1, Unit 1, Lesson 8, Practice. Now, if you're having trouble with some of the sequences and the recursive functions here, I highly recommend you going back and watching all of the videos. Jumping in in the middle, it makes it look really confusing, but if you go back down to the basics, these actual problems are actually pretty simple. All right, let's get started. Also, if you like this video, make sure to like and subscribe, and I think you can press the button in this corner right here in order to do this. <laughs> let's go. Problem 1. A sequence is defined by 0, f of 0, so the 0th term of the sequence is equal to negative 20. f of n, the nth term in the sequence, is equal to f of n minus 1, which represents the previous term in the sequence minus 5, for n greater than or equal to 1. Explain why f of 1 is equal to 20 minus 5. Well, if our first term is negative 20, or our 0th term is negative 20, the next term, which is going to be 1, is going to be equal to the term before minus 5. So f of 1 is going to equal to the term before, which is negative 20, minus 5. And that's it. That's what our function says. 2. Explain why f of 3, or the third term in the function, is going to be 20 minus 5 minus 5 minus 5. So let's think about this. We want to think of f of 3. Well, this is going to equal the previous term of the function. So we're going to call this minus f of 2 minus 5. And let's define this f of 2 here. So the f of 2 is equal to the previous term of the function minus 5. So I just defined f of 2 right there. And I'm going to put them in parentheses. But we didn't lose that minus 5 over here. Now we're going to define this f of 1. f of 1 is going to equal the previous term in the function, which is f of 0, minus 5. But we didn't lose that minus 5, and we didn't lose this minus 5 that's all the way out here. Finally, let's define f of 0. Well, f of 0 is defined by negative 20. That minus 5 didn't go anywhere, that minus 5 didn't go anywhere, and this minus 5 didn't go anywhere. So we're done. We always want to go back to the definition of the function in order to figure out problems like this. Going back to the definition will allow us to build and write our answers in different ways, which is all this is, is we're writing f of 3 in a different way than we saw it up here. Complete the expression. f of 10 is equal to negative 20 minus what? Well, if we start to notice a pattern here, f of 1 is equal to negative 20 minus 1, 5 f of 3 is going to be negative 20 minus 3 fives. So f of 10 is going to be negative 20 minus 10 fives. And all of those minus sides are put together in this number right here. Now, I'm looking at my answer and I see I made a mistake because we have minus 5, minus 5, minus 5. All of those minus fives get represented in that minus 5 over there. So what's actually going to happen is not a double negative. It's going to be minus 10 times 5 because we've subtracted it so many times. All right, pause the video here if you need to think about your answer or go back over this because I know this is complex. Otherwise, I am going on to the next question. Problem 2. A sequence is defined by the 0th term of the sequence is equal to negative 4. f of n is equal to f of n minus 1 minus 2 for n greater than or equal to 1. Write a definition for the nth term of the sequence. Well, think about what we did up here. When we had the zeroth term and the function, all we did was we started with the zeroth term and subtracted that to get the first term. So what we're going to do here is we're going to start with the zeroth term, and that represents that there. And then we're going to subtract the 2 but we're going to subtract it n times. Why is it n times? Because it's the nth term of the sequence. We don't know if it's the first term, the second term, or the third term, or the 700th term. But put an n, we can do it just like that. And we're done. Problem number three. Here is the recursive definition of a sequence. So f of 1 is equal to 3. f of n is equal to 2 times the previous term where n is greater than or equal to 2. Find the first five terms of the sequence. This is multiplication, so I know that it is a geometric sequence. 
So, and I know each term of the sequence is multiplied by 2. So 3 times 2 is 6, times 2 is 12, times 2 is 24, times 2 is 48. Graph the first value of the term as a function of the term number. So our first term is 3. Then we're at 6. The third term is 12, which is going to be a little bit above the 10. The fourth is at 24. The fifth is all the way up at 48. Is this sequence arithmetic, geometric, or neither? Well, we are multiplied by a growth factor, and we are a curvy boy right here, which means that we are a geometric sequence. And that's it. When it is curved like this, we know that it's a geometric sequence. Let's go on to the next question. Here is a graph of sequence M. Define M recursively using function notation. So we have a sequence. We want to define it recursively. So let's sit here and we say, okay, we got a, the first term we know that's going to be a seven because this is one, that's seven. The second term is two, that's five. Third term is three, it goes to three. Four, it's one. This should be negative one. Now, I know it's arithmetic because all the dots line up in a line. And looking quickly, I can see that we subtract two each time to get to our next number. So let's think, what is our first term? We're going to define our first term as f of n is equal to 7. Well, f of 1 is equal to 7. If f of n was equal to 7, we would have a very different looking sequence. f of n is going to be the term before minus 2. And there we go. We have defined m recursively using function notation. Now we can go on to the next question. Notice in the question above, I actually changed the notation a little bit. They defined the sequence as m, and I defined it as f, which is OK. Um, which is OK. Um, in this case, well, it's not OK. It should have been m to the n is equal m to the n minus 1. Uh, and we said it was minus 2. So m is the name of our function, whereas I said it was f. So just make sure that your notation lines up with the notation that's represented in the problem. Let's go on to the next question, problem 5. Write the first five terms of each sequence. Determine whether each sequence is arithmetic, geometric, or neither. So, well, the first term of the sequence is 5. And then looking at our rule, it's going to be the previous term plus 3. So 5 plus 3 is 8, 11, 14, 17, dot, dot, dot. And because we're adding a constant number, this is arth, arithmetic. Here, our first term is 1. Then we multiply the previous term by 3. So it's going to be 3, 9, 27, 81. We're multiplying by a constant, so this is geo. Here, the first term is 3. We are going to have the negative of the previous term plus 1. So the negative of, neg of 3 is negative 3, or the inverse of 3 is negative 3, plus 1 is negative 2. The inverse of negative 2 is positive 2, plus 1 is positive 3. The inverse of negative 3 is negative 3, plus 1 is negative 2. Hmm, I see a pattern here. This is neither geometric or arithmetic. And then our last sequence, we start with a 5. And then it's going to be the previous term plus n. So this is our second term. So the previous term is 5 plus our second term is 7. The previous term is 3. The next, the term we're looking for is the third term. The previous term is 7. So it's going to be 7 plus 3, which is 10. This is the fourth term, so 14. The fifth term, 19, dot, dot, dot. And this one is also neither. Because although we're adding each time, we are adding by a different number each time. And actually, we are adding by the counting numbers because we're adding the next number in the sequence. All right, next question. Problem number six, and this is our last question. Here's a graph of a sequence. My face is in the way, let's move it out. In this sequence, is this sequence arithmetic or geometric? He's a curvy boy, so he's geometric. That's it. List at least the first five terms of the sequence. 64 is the first term. 16, 
4. We're divided by 2 each time. 2, 1 half, 1 fourth, dot, dot, dot. Write a recursive definition of a function. Well, checking this time, they have no name of the function, so I can make it up myself. I'm going to call it m. m of 1 is going to be 64. And then m of n, which is each term, is going to be the previous term multiplied by 1 half. And we're done. All right, if you have any questions, please put them in the comments below. Otherwise, I look forward to seeing you in the next video. All right, see you next time.